Okay, this is our first water balance example problem and it's a water balance in a lake and you should have the problem statement. So we're looking at a given month, a 300 acre lake has a 15 cubic feet per second inflow, 13 cubic feet per second outflow, total storage increase of 16 acre feet, USGS gauge next to the lake recorded a total of 1.3 inches of precip for the lake for the month. If we assume that infiltration loss is insignificant, we want to determine the evaporation loss in inches over the lake for the month. So the first thing we're going to do, the first thing we always do, is we're going to draw a picture and we're going to identify what we've been given, what are knowns, known quantities, and what do we need to find. So I'm going to try to be small so this will all fit on the board. So we have, we're going to draw our picture of our lake here. And we're going to identify our inflows and our outflows from the problem statement. So first thing for a given month. So, so here are our knowns, or sometimes I'll write this as what's given, right? Um, the first thing is that our time period, which we're going to call delta T, is one month which we're going to say that's 30 days. And we have a 300 acre lake, so our surface area of our lake, which we're going to call A, is 300 acres. And we have a 15 cubic feet per second inflow. So we have some flow in, and we're going to call this R in for runoff in. So surface runoff in, R in, is 15 CFS, and our R out. So surface runoff out is 13 CFS. And our total storage increase, so that's our change in storage delta S. So change in storage delta S is 16 acre feet. And just to review, an acre foot is an acre of land one foot deep in water. So about the size of a football field with the end zones a foot deep in water. And that's a very common unit of measure for large volumes of water in the United States. There is a USGS gauge next to the lake. It recorded 1.3 inches of precip. So I'll say precip here, P, 1.3 inches. And if we assume, so we always want to write our assumptions down, so we're going to assume that, oh, I forgot to identify the P there, um, we're going to assume that infiltration is about equal to zero, so that means we have no seepage, no groundwater flow out of the lake. We want to determine what is our evaporation loss in inches over the lake for the month. So we want to find evap for delta T. So let's add our evaporation flowing out of the lake. So we can go ahead and set up our water balance equation. So our water balance equation. And when on your homeworks, you want to make sure you always write whatever method or equation that you're using. So where does the equation that you're using come from? So our basic water balance equation is that our inflow minus our outflow is equal to the change in storage. And another thing we want to make sure we always do when we're solving problems is that we set up and solve the problem symbolically first. 
we don't plug any numbers in until the very, very end, okay? So first thing we're going to do is, is symbolically set this up. So what are our inflows? Our inflows are a precip plus our runoff, surface runoff in. And our outflows minus here is evaporation plus our surface runoff out. And that's going to be equal to our change in storage. And what we're looking for, what we want to find is evaporation. So that's our E. So I'm going to put it, our capital E is our what we're calling evaporation. Another thing you always want to do when you're solving problems is define each one of these terms that you use. So if you use E, make sure you say that's for evaporation. P is for precip. Uh, earlier I had used Q for storm runoff, um, st stream flow, and now I'm using R for runoff. So you always want to be clear about what the variables that you're using mean. All right, so what we're interested in is we want E. So we're going to solve for our evaporation. So we can move evaporation over to the other side, move delta S to this side, and we end up with the equation that we're ultimately going to solve, and that is our evaporation is equal to our runoff in plus our precipitation minus our runoff out minus our change in storage. So this is what we're going to be solving for. That's our final equation. The challenge that we have now is we want to get this into, change colors here, we want to get this into inches, right? And But our runoff in is in cubic feet per second, and we want it actually in inches per month. Um, precipitation is in inches per month, so that's handy. We're already there. Uh, our runoff out is in cubic feet per second, and our change in storage is in acre feet per month. So what we need to do to get this all to work out is we need to get runoff in and runoff out converted from CFS to inches per month, and we need to convert delta S from acre feet per month into inches per month. Now again, notice I talked earlier about how we're going to be doing a lot of things using um, depth of water over an area to represent a volume. So notice these two are in depth and these are in volume. So what we're going to have to do is divide each of these volumes by the area, the surface area of the lake, to get the depth of water over the lake. And I've got our equation that we're going to be solving for, um, evaporation up here at the top. And now what we need to do is work on converting runoff in and runoff out from cubic feet per second into inches per month. So let's start with our runoff in. And so what we have is 15 cubic feet per second. So we need to convert seconds to months and we need to convert cubic feet. Um, we ultimately need to get it into inches per month, but what we need to do is divide by the surface area of the lake. Um, so we're going to do runoff in over A, and that's going to give us units of depth per time. So we have to divide this by 300 acres. And we need to convert acres to square feet. So there are 43,560 square feet per acre. And now let's see what happens with our unit conversion here. Our acres will cancel. And these square feet are going to get rid of two of those. So now what we have is how many feet of water per second arrived at the lake spread out over 300 acres. And now we need to convert seconds to a month and there are 3600 seconds per hour and there are 24 hours per day and 30 days per month and what we end up with here, I'll 
well let's get these units taken care of. So our seconds cancel here, our hours cancel here, our days cancel there. And so we now have feet per month. And our result is that our runoff and is 2.98 feet of water per month ran into the lake and spread out over that 300 acres. And we need to convert that to inches. So there are 12 inches per foot. And what we end up with is 35.7 inches of water. We're going to call this our runoff in. So we have 35.7 inches coming in. And then let's do the same thing for our runoff out, which was 13 cubic feet per second. We're going to divide that by 300 acres and multiply that by 43,560 square feet per acre. Oops. And um, that times this second conversion works out to 2,592,000 seconds per month. And, and then we have to also add our 12 inches per foot. And what we end up with is 30.94 inches. So now we have our runoff in in inches. We already had our precip, which is an inflow, in inches. Now we have our runoff out in inches, so we just have to change our change in storage to inches. So our change in storage, delta S, is 16 acre feet. So again, we're going to divide by the surface area of the lake, which is that 300 acres. So divide by 300 acres. And so the acres cancel. Now we just have feet and all we have to do is multiply by 12 inches per foot. And what we end up with is that our change in storage is 0.64 inches. So now we have all of our different components expressed in inches per month and we can plug them in. Okay, so we're ready now to plug in the values that we've uh, figured out. Well, we, we're given precipitation. We've now converted runoff in and runoff out from cubic feet per second to inches, and we got our change in storage converted from acre feet per month to inches per month. So we can now plug everything into our equation. So our evaporation now is going to be equal to 35.7 inches plus 1.3 inches minus 30.9 inches minus 0 0.64 inches. And what we end up with is that our evaporation is 5.42 inches. And this is our monthly evaporation. So there's the solution to our problem. It's interesting to compare the magnitude of the different hydrologic processes. We can see that the runoff in and out are our biggest volumes of flow uh, into and out of our pond. And evaporation exceeds precipitation. Um, our change in storage is positive, though, so that means that there's more inflow into the lake then there is outflow, and so that means the lake level is rising. All right, we'll get ready to do another example.